Welcome back. In this video, we are going to learn how to create a navigation system. So right now, this is hard coded blog uses contact any other pages. What if we wanted to just have pages managed in Wagtail and in here, you know, show in menus. What if we just want those pages to show up in our menu? You know, we can absolutely do that with Wagtail and it's quite easy. So how this is going to work is first we're going to open up our project and we're going to take our entire navigation system and we're going to put it into a different file. It just makes this a little bit easier to manage. And then after that, we're going to create a template tag in order to loop through all the available pages. So I'm going to open up my base.html from the last video. And we have two of them in here and I don't really like how this is working. Can I zip that up nicely? Not really. So we're going to grab this whole header here. And is this mobile as well? I can't remember. Uh, it does not look like it. it looks like this might be mobile here. So we want to grab all this stuff right here. And this HTML is pretty gross looking. And what we're going to do, we're going to create a new block in here. And this is in our base.html file. And we're going to call this, I don't know, navigation or header or nav bar or something like that. And then we're going to open up, uh, no, actually, we're not going to open up. Uh, I got ahead of myself there. What we're going to do is in my project under not static, but under templates, right? We have our base.html. I'm going to create a folder in here. I'm going to call it includes, and this is going to be called navigation.html and paste everything in there. Now, typically I would make this HTML look significantly better, a lot more user friendly, uh, but that's not the point of this particular uh, mini course. So what we're going to do is we're just going to save that. And in here by default, we're going to say include, and then the folder name and the file that we just created. Now, if I go into here, and refresh my page, you can see it doesn't work. Because I did not have my server started. Let's go ahead and run server. So I'm going to try this again. And uh, oh, look at that. You know, invalid block tag for line four static. So because I moved one file, or rather a piece of a file over to another one, right, we are apparently using static somewhere in this new navigation file. So if I look for static, yeah, there it is. So what we need to do is at the very top, load static, just to save that and refresh. And it works. And I know that it's working because if I delete the navigation that just that include not the block just the include it goes away perfect something is working the way we want it to work that is exactly what we're looking for now the reason i put this in a block is because maybe on some other page down the road maybe you've got a sales page of some kind you want to get rid of this all you have to do is open up whatever your template is and you know we see block content so that's going to inject hello world right in here so essentially, it would look like hello world. Now, if we wanted to get rid of that, all we have to do is go to our homepage and really anywhere in here and block. So we say block with nothing in it and block and it's going to overwrite it. So in our base.html, we are including the navigation, but watch, it still will not show up. Perfect. We've overwritten it. So now we have that option. That's why we use uh, blocks like that. So let's get rid of it because I do want the navigation to show up on this page. Now we want to be able to loop through something and, and grab these pages and put them in there. So for this, we have two different options. We can either use a context processor, which is what I often do, or we can use a template tag. So I'm going to show you the template tag this time around. So what I'm going to do is in my home app, I'm going to create a new folder and I'm going to call this template tags, one word, and then I'm going to create a file called navbartags.py. And beside this file, I'm also going to create double underscore init.py. And that just tells Python, hey, this is a module. There's some other code in here. Now in navbartags.py, we can kind of close that guy and close that file too. In fact, we could close base.html as well. In navbartags.py, we're going to say from Django import, let me try that again, from Django import template. 
and we're also going to say from wagtail.models import page. Now we're going to use page in just a second, so bear with me. We're going to grab that registry, uh, registry I guess, uh, and it's going to have all of our libraries in there. Then we're going to say template tag. Uh, nope. Um, what is it called? A decorator. Forgot the word there. Register. Done. We're going to do a simple tag, and this one is going to be called mm, get navbar pages, I guess. And we're simply going to return a list at this point, and it's going to be item one, item two, item three. And this is just for demonstration purposes. We are going to fix this in just a moment. Now I'm going to load both navbar tags. Uh, and, and I'm going to try to use this. So I'm going to go into my navigation.html because this is where I'm going to be using that file. I'm going to load navbar tags. Remember, that's the name of the file. And in here, I can then write get navbar pages as uh, navbar pages or something. So what this is going to do is allow this file to be imported into our template here. And then we're going to use that function. So if I split this, we're going to see navbar tags is the file, and get navbar pages is the function. All right. So now with that said, we can use this as a list. Now what we want to do at this point is we want to look for this list, right? We've got a list item here, a list item there, and a list item here. So we've got blog, uses, and contact. These, I believe, are all the same. So I'm going to get rid of two out of three of them. And I'm just going to use one. And I'm going to say for, mm, it's called a navbar page in navbar pages. right? And that's coming up from the very top here, navbar pages, which is going to return an iterable in Python so we can loop through this. And we're going to say for each one, show this code. And we're going to simplify some of this stuff in here just a little bit because it makes it a little more legible for me and hopefully for you as well. So we have a list item. We have some sort of hovering thing going on from our template. Uh, and then we have this. And in, in here, all I'm going to do just for now is I'm just going to simply put navbar page. Now it's going to loop through each one of these and it's going to say item one, two, and, and three. Have I done this correctly? That's what it will do. Oh no, what happened here? This is very common when you're creating a new template tag. So you go in, st stop your Django server, restart your Django server. And that's just because Python or Django rather was not looking for a new file. So we have to go and add it in here and then restart Django and Django goes, oh yeah, right. I know about that one now. There we go, item one, two, and three, but these links aren't gonna work. So what we can do from there is, instead of just returning a standard list, we can return page.objects.live.public, so that means the page is published, it is not private, so it is a public page, it is in our menu system, and we're gonna filter with a depth greater than or equal to two. And the depth simply is Django tree beard working behind the scenes. If we don't have this, we're going to, you know what, actually, I'll just show you what it looks like. Let's do this. Uh, so all pages that are live that are public in the menu system. We see nothing. So let's go into our admin and let's say, uh, yes, let's leave. We're going to edit our homepage. And we go to promote and show in menus, boop, 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 publish. Oh no, homepage shows up in there. We might not want the homepage to show up in there because the logo usually is the homepage. So what we do is we say filter with a depth of greater than two. So any child pages. And actually what that should be is greater than two, not greater than or equal to two. And when I refresh the page, it doesn't show up. Perfect. Now watch this, because we don't have any other page types. We really just have to create a bunch of home pages at this point. We are going to go ahead and create a child home page. And we're just going to say sample one, promote, show in menus, publish. And let's refresh our page. And there it is. Sample one, because <laughs> I typoed that. All right, let's do 
another one, right? Sempele, we're gonna keep with typos. Sempele 2. We're gonna publish. And that one doesn't show up. And that's because when I edit this page, right, we said it has to be in the menus. Promote for site menus, show in menus, check, publish, and away we go. Now, you notice that it, at the bottom left is going to blog.html, that's not acceptable. It needs to go to an actual place. So, what we can do is get rid of that line that wasn't being used, and instead of navbar page, we actually have a full page object at this point. So we can do some curly braces here, mustache syntax, if you will, navbar page dot URL. That's gonna give us the URL to that page. And even though this one works here uh, as the string representation of that page, we're gonna type navbar page dot title, and that's the actual title of the page. And there we go. And I can now go to these different URLs. Uh, it looks like nothing's changing and that's totally okay. We just want the nav bar to work and you can see up here the URL is in fact changing when I click on any of these pages. So that is in fact working. The last thing we need to do, and I'm just gonna go into mobile mode and uh-oh, blog uses and contact are still there. So we're gonna do the same thing. We're gonna grab this for loop and we're gonna look down and we've got uh, li, blog, uses, and contact, and these all look basically the exact same as far as I can tell. So let's get rid of them. And we are gonna clean some of this up to make it a little more legible. Cool, so now we can do the same thing. For navbar page in navbar pages, and as a reminder, navbar pages comes from right there, which is calling this function, which comes from that file. So navbar pages, and we're gonna say, at the end, don't forget the end for, otherwise Django will complain, and we're gonna do the exact same thing, right? It's returning a page object in every iter iteration, so that navbar page is gonna have a title, and da -da 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 -da, navbar page dot URL. All right, let's see, the moment of truth. Ta-da, it works. We have working navigation. And that's using a template tag. So usually I show you how to do this with a context processor. I'm not sure I've ever showed anyone how to do this in a video before. Um, so this is a fantastic way of, of doing this. Uh, the benefit of using a template tag versus a context processor for anyone who's a little familiar with those. A context processor, every time you render a template is gonna try to run this code. Caching usually kicks in and make sure that you don't have too many queries. Um, but this is only ever gonna run when you tell it to. So this is actually a little bit better. In the next lesson, we're going to learn how to modify these links because right now they are hard coded. Uh, and so we're gonna really start to flesh out our entire base page. Notice that the content has not changed yet. That is okay. We're just working on the base part of our project right now. We just want it to look as much like this as possible with the features that are on every single page. And that's the header and the footer right now. So we're gonna do that in the next lesson.